So we are so pleased to have you here today on the call. And I'm also delighted um, that I've got my co-host presenting. So we'll have um, Jeff from Thomson Reuters. We have Anis from ORCID. We have from Altmetric. And myself, Lupec from QDOS. Now today's session, we're going to cover increasing an evidence of your published work. So we are going to be covering who we are, and that's specifically with QDOS. And then when we go into the different sections, my co-hosts are going to talk about um, who they are, knowing how to market your work. So this is very much about how to distinguish yourself and how to be discoverable, how to evidence your impact, and then how to further go on and increase that impact. And then finally, we have some next steps. And there are some polls throughout this presentation, so please do just answer those. And it helps to guide us in how we um, want to talk to you in this session and what you want to learn most about. OK, so we will begin on who are we? So we work with the author community day in, day out at QDOS, and we currently have over 100,000 users, and we're a relatively young service. We only launched in May 2014 after a really successful 2013. And we hear lots of things like, there are so many ways to do my work. How do I know what works? Or maybe we hear, how do I know what effect my impact, my efforts are having on impact? And how can I measure this? And we know that time is so precious for you. So that's why QDOS can help you. Not only have we already got over 100,000 authors who are using QDOS, but it's a free service for researchers. It's an online kit that helps you to impact research, but also to help build academic reputation. Now, you'll notice, as I mentioned at the beginning here, that um, we're co-hosting this session. And we work with a number of different partners, especially as a young service. We've already got 10 partnerships on the go. But today, we're going to just concentrate on three of those. And these are most interesting, um, increasing your impact. So how are we going to help you today? Now, this is a really informative session. Remember, if you have any questions or comments, please do add this into the right-hand side in the questions area. But we're going to help you to distinguish yourself, to explain and share your work in simple language. How can you evidence that impact, specifically with um, altmetric counts and web of science time-cited counts? And then how you can go on to increase that impact further. OK. so. This section is called Knowing How to Market Your Work. And we're specifically going to concentrate on here how to distinguish yourself, but also how to be discoverable. So I'm now going to hand over to Alice, who is going to talk about ORCID. Thank you. Hi, everyone. And uh, fantastic um, to see that 70% of you have already used ORCID. That's wonderful. I hope this won't be too boring for you. Um, but uh, we're delighted to be here on this webinar. Thanks to QDOS for inviting us. Um, so I thought we'd start off with, oh, sorry, having mouse control today, uh, problems today. Um, I thought we'd start off with a, what I think is one of the nicest examples of, of why ORCID. And some of you may have seen this. This was a little um, thing that popped up on Twitter earlier this year from Mark Burney, who quoted, I'm the 38th author. Dot, dot, dot. Wow, that sucks. I hadn't finished. I'm the 38th author called Wang. Hmm. So what does that look like? Well, this is the um, list of authors for the, for the article that uh, Mark was talking about. And this, it appears on your screen, is, uh, has got the, the Wangs highlighted. And you'll see there are indeed 38 of them. And there are rather a lot of C Wangs and Y Wangs and H Wangs. So I think this is a really good example of why um, ORCID is needed, why uh, a way to distinguish yourself from other 
researchers and authors with either the same name as you or a similar name to you, or maybe you published under different names, maybe your name has changed. There are all sorts of reasons why um, names are very ambiguous um, in, in all sorts of situations, but certainly very much in a, in a sort of research context. So I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about our vision. This is something that we developed earlier this year. We've had a mission all along. We're, um, like QDOS, a relatively new organization. We launched in uh, October 2012. Um, and although we had a mission statement all along, this is actually our first vision statement. And we spent quite a bit of time developing it. So I want to talk you through in a little bit of detail because um, there's some critical stuff here. So our vision is a world where all who participate in research, scholarship, and innovation, and that's important because we're a very inclusive organization. And when people often think um, that ORCID is just for authors, and although obviously um, the publication is a very important um, uh, element of what we do, and actually publishers were among the earliest adopters of ORCID, actually what's really, I think, both critical and somewhat unique about ORCID is that we're not just for authors, and we're not just for those working in academia, we're, we're for all researchers and all other contributors to research across academia, um, government, commerce, all areas of, of research. Um, as I said before, we, we're all about uniquely identifying um, uh, authors, but also, again, critically, about connecting you contributions and affiliations. So it's not just about being able to identify yourself, it's also being able to make that connection between you and your works and your affiliations. And then lastly, um, this happens across disciplines, borders, and time. So again, particularly, I think, when ORCID first got going, there was a, a sort of a little bit of a sense that maybe it was mostly for people in science and technical areas. But we're not. We're completely, we work completely across all disciplines. And in fact, there's an increasing number of, for example, um, researchers in the humanities now have uh, ORCID IDs. We're also completely international. And that's important, not just because ORCID um, is being used internationally, but for a researcher who may travel around during the course of his or her career, um, you can use the same ORCID ID irrespective of which institution you're at, um, which discipline you're in, which country you're living in, which city you're living in. So your, your ORCID ID carries with you throughout your career, and that's the last point. So it's, it, it's um, persistent. It stays with you throughout your entire career. So that's, that's our vision. And what, are, what, what is ORCID? Well, first and foremost, we're an open organization. We, we don't use our full name anymore. Our full name is um, uh, Open Researcher and Contributor ID. It is what we're known by. But the O is for open, and that's very important. We're also a not-for-profit organization, and we're run by and for the research community. So for example, our board comprises member organizations, and it, they have to be a majority of not-for-profit organizations. Um, we provide authors, researchers with a unique, unique identifier, an ORCID ID, um, and this is what's used to the, both identify you and then connect you with your research contributions and affiliations. And the great thing is that you can now use your ID in hundreds of systems. We have at least 250 um, integrations live now, and those are just member integrations. We, as I said, are an open organization, so we do have a public API. So we know that um, there are a number of other integrations out there that are using the public API. Um, so literally hundreds and growing all the time. We've got, I think, at least another 100 in development. Um, so you're going to see them um, more and more encounter ORCID more and more in your daily work. And this is across the gamut. So this isn't, again, just for publication, but um, all the different activities that you undertake as a, as a researcher, from grant application through manuscript submission to um, using your university CRIS system or other research information management system, systems like QDOS, obviously. Um, there's many, many systems out there already um, using ORCID and many more in the pipeline. I'm not going to go through all these different benefits for researchers. A lot of you already have um, an ORCID ID, and hopefully you're, you're seeing some of these benefits. These mostly came out of a survey, a community survey we did about a year ago now, um, in which around 6,000 mostly researchers got back to us. 70% um, of them had an ID already, 30% didn't. And um, most of these were things that they told us they saw as benefits um, for ORCID. Um, I'm just going to pick out a few that I think are especially important or that I haven't spoken about already. 
I think number three saves you time and once three use often. This is our kind of mantra and one of the things that we hear a lot from researchers is that you get terribly frustrated by the fact that you're constantly having to key in the same information over and over again and not only is that frustrating and time consuming for you but of course it um, introduces errors potentially as well. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that on the next slide but this is something that I think is a huge benefit. It will become more of a benefit as more systems integrate with ORCID. Um, number six, I think, is something that I haven't flagged yet and, again, is a really important one. The fact that researchers own and control your records. So unlike most um, uh, uh, sort of identifier systems where you're allocated an ID and, and you can manage um, you know, much of the information, but, but um, you know, for example, in an institutional setting, your institution gives you an ID and they take it away from you when you leave and all the rest of it. Your ORCID ID, you, you have to claim it yourself, you control your record, you decide what information should be connected with it and whether or not to share it. So you can connect all sorts of information to your ORCID record, and you can choose to keep all of it private if you want. You don't have to share any of it with anyone. Now, obviously, we think there are benefits to sharing, at least with trusted parties, which would be ORCID members, so that you can benefit from them updating your record and from sharing their, your information with them so that they can update their records in order to achieve this number three saves you time and to once reuse often. But the decision is yours and you decide at a very granular level. So if you have 10 publications and one of them was published way back and you really don't want anybody to know about it anymore, you can make that one private and make all, or make all the rest shareable with trusted parties. So a lot of control and that's something that I think is really, really important. I think number seven is another one that's um, increasingly important. You may know that uh, already that a number of um, funders require an ORCID ID for grant applications. Um, there's also uh, a number of publishers increasingly starting to require an ORCID ID at manuscript submission for the corresponding author. Um, and you know that's likely to grow in future as these, those sorts of organizations see the value of ORCID for themselves and for their research community. Number nine, I, those of you that um, have already registered know this, but this, uh, not surprisingly, was, I think, one of the top um, reasons to get an ORCID from our survey. It's free for, um, like QDOS, it's free for researchers. Um, we're supported by the contributions of our member organizations, and that allows us to make ORCID IDs free for you to register for and to use. And then number 10 is just an interesting one to me. This was um, something that we put in there, not really expecting there to be a huge amount of take up, but actually it was um, the top reason that people gave for um, getting an ORCID ID um, in general was that, that ORCID is helping to make the internet work better for research. So nice altruistic lot you all are. So I said I'd talk a little bit more about the sort of enter once, reuse often thing. And this is just a kind of high level infographic of this interoperability that we, this is what we're aspiring to. We're not there yet because there are many systems that aren't yet integrated with ORCID, even though there are many that are. And of course, not all researchers are using ORCID yet either. But our sort of, our dream, if you like, our, our vision ultimately is that you, the researcher in the middle, and the organizations that you work with are collecting your ORCID ID, doing so in a validated way, which means you have to put in your, um, your, your login to your ORCID record to say, yes, this really is me, so that you and your institution, your organization can be confident about that. And then after that happens, they can connect information back to your record, which benefits you because you know it's going to be um, up to date and validated. And and then that information around the outside flows between those different sorts of organizations. So when you apply for a grant, instead of having to rekey all your publications in, your um, funder can, can pull that information via your ORCID record in from the publishers that you work with. They can pull your affiliation in from your, from your employer and so on. So it's a, this, is a, this is a sort of high level representation, but this is, this is how we want your world to work going forward. And we think that will really benefit everyone, certainly you, because let's say it will save you time and reduce errors, but also your organizations and ultimately the whole scholarly community by building these much more trusted, um, validated assertions about researchers and their works that will flow through the whole ecosystem. A little bit on ORCID facts and figures. We're up to, I think actually this keeps changing, which is great. I think we're now up to over 530 organizational members and um, as I mentioned, over 250 live integrations. 
And also, uh, update, as of last Friday, we cracked, as you may have seen on Twitter, we are now have over 2.25 million um, live ORCID IDs. Um, those are associated with well over 15 million works activities, close to 7 million DOIs, uh, getting up towards a thousand, um, uh, sorry, a million employment activities and over a million education activities. So really a lot of information there. And that's it from me, I think. Fantastic. Alice, thank you so much for that. Um, and do remember, if um, you do have any questions or queries to ask us, we will be covering these at the end of the session. Um, and please um, do put them in the questions area on the right-hand side. I can see that people have started doing this already. So make sure they're in that questions area. OK, so now looking in terms of how ORCID and QDOS work together, it is so easy to connect your ORCID account to QDOS. And not only can you connect your ORCID account to QDOS and pull in those publications of yours that you've already got listed in QDOS in ORCID with the DOI, but if you haven't yet got an ORCID account, you can actually sign up for one of these through the QDOS login screen. Now, I mentioned that you can add your DOIs from ORCID to QDOS. And if you're not sure what a DOI is, you might have heard that term before. DOI is a digital object identifier, and this is like having a unique number for your publication. So just like with ORCID who work with services like Crossref, we use that system as a central database to say, I've got this DOI, now tell me all the metadata that we need. I'm going to build a page in QDOS about that. And that's how we can find out who the publisher is, what the authors are um, in terms of the names of the authors all that kind of information. So as long as you've got your DOIs in your ORCID account, you can easily pull those into QDOS automatically. And we also update regularly. So as you're using your ORCID account and adding more of the DOIs, we then go through and do automatic updates to populate your dashboard. Now, I just said the word dashboard, and this is what it means. So in QDOS, you have a, an author dashboard with publications that may be populated from your ORCID account when you connect them, or even you've done some manual searching and claim them to your account. Um, or even because we work with over 60 publishers, they've told us that this publication is yours. So when you log in or when you register, you may find some publications in there. Now, you could find that you've got quite an extensive list and where to start. Well, we just say, why not just pick one and start explaining that? because you'll get a really good sense of how easy QDOS is to use and how quick it is. So I've got a nice example here of an author called Alice of a QDOS publication page that's been explained. And so there's been a simple title that's been added. And that appears at the top. And whenever this is um, used in widgets or um, this is the title that people see, and it's just a lay title, you may have a title that's um, quite long and very in-depth, but you want to open your research out to a wider community. A lay summary, what's it about? You could also add an impact statement, why is it important? And I think what's important to note here is when we talk about interoperability, we do have the call, but we're also doing a pilot with Thomson Reuters for Scholar One, which is their manuscript system. And we're looking at how we can pull in that kind of information that you're putting in an earlier stage, in the submission stage, to pull into your QDOS publication pages. And that pilot um, is going really, really well at the moment. But we want to make the journey easier for you. We want to save time where possible. And that's why these partnerships are so important. You can also add your own perspective. And this is fantastic if you've got a number of co-authors who are working together on a QDOS publication page, which happens often. Um, you may be in different subject disciplines, and so you can add your own individual perspective to the page. And then also you can add resources. So maybe you've done a talk, a presentation. Maybe you've got a data set. You want to link out to something else that is relevant to that publication. But what we will say is you don't need to link to the full text. QDOS doesn't host full text content. And by having your DOI, we're able to get a sustainable URL so that we can link to where that full text lives, which is generally the publisher's website. 
However, your institution, if we're working with them, can also add a link, and you can do this too, to the resources area so that you can link to the institutional repository version if you want to as well. So you've explained it. Maybe you've just added a simplified title and you just want to share it. Maybe you've gone in there and you've added more explained content. Maybe you've gone in there, shared it, and want to go back in, which many of our authors do, to explain further. Treat it as a one-stop shop. Sharing is so easy on QDOS. Um, here is a screenshot of my share screen because I've already connected Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I can simply post to those areas. And I've also started to type into the box, and underneath are some counts. And this tells me how many characters I have left for those different channels. And you'll see that I've got a hashtag in there called Mobilize Research. Now, if you're not aware of this, we've got a new pledge that we've just started. And this is running till the end of the year. And QDOS is pledging that for every hashtag that's used on Twitter or every share, and you don't have to use the hashtag for this, but for every share that's done on QDOS, we are going to give 1P towards the Open Knowledge International. And this is a, a pledge that we're doing for researchers who believe in our belief that research deserves a broader audience. So do make sure that you are using that hashtag mobilize research to enable us to do this um, pledge campaign. It's so important, but also, most importantly, just use our simple shared online toolkit to share through QDOS. Now you'll notice here that I've got social media shown. Maybe you don't want to use social media, no problem. The right hand side, I clicked on the generate link button and I'm given a trackable URL. And I can use that trackable URL and maybe sending an email to my colleagues if I want to um, post in my blog. But it's a way of you being able to track what you're already doing. And it's so simple to share on QDOS. And you can also track and monitor your activities. So we've talked about distinguishing yourself with ORCID, which we know is very important. And we know that this is becoming compulsory with some publishers and also um, institutions very much want their researchers to be doing this. And in fact, the, the industry is very much moving towards this. But it's also about being discoverable. Content is king, discoverability is queen. So QDOS is indexed in search engines. So make sure that you're adding some explained content in there. Make sure you've got a publication page on QDOS. It just helps you to be more discoverable. We've got widgets as well. This is something that our publishers and our institutional partners and any other partners we work with can use in their, in their um, online platforms. We've got a great example here from IUCR that shows a publication page on their platform and the widget that they're using. And this pulls in the explained information like, for example, the simple title or what it's about, the impact statement, why is it important, and also the resources. So there's ways that our partners that we work with can support you as well and recognize the efforts that you're doing and also ensure that um, you're reaching a wider audience as well. And of course, there's a number of partners already, but there are so many more that we can be working with. And if you have any suggestions, do send them through to us at support at growthudos.com. We'd love to hear from you. Okay. So um, we're now just going to move into the section called Evidence Impact. And I know that this is really important. And um, we're going to cover here altmetrics and um, citations. So before I hand over, I'm just going to show you very briefly where you can already find this evidence in your QDOS account. So simply go into your QDOS account, top right hand side, click on the menu button, go into your author dashboard, which you've already seen in a previous slide. And this will give you all your metrics, whether it's I've explained this publication already. These are the shares that I've already done through the different channels. But also the metrics in terms of what performance, or how is my publication performing after I've done these activities? Or even, I haven't yet done any activities, but I can see that I've got a Web of Science Times Cited Count or an Altmetric score. And then finally, we've got this more details area, which is a really nice way for you to have a visual impact of what you've been doing. Um, this 
image here just displays um, some full text downloads and some abstract views information as well because some publishers send this through to us. So you can see that if you did a specific activity on a certain day, did that have a positive impact to the full text downloads? And you will also notice here that we've got like A, um, when you hover over that, that means an author did an activity, whether that was yourself, one of your co-authors, and you can hover over that and see what activity was done. And then K means kudos did an activity because we do um, actions to recognize your efforts. We spotlight you, we include you in campaigns. And you may also see P because the publishers that we work with, they may have done some kind of activity. Maybe they even are working with you as an advocate or to be a case study and they've actually um, got some links that they want to add into a resources area or even an impact statement. Do make sure that you're reaching out to your institutions and your publishers and your funders to help them to, to help you to recognize your efforts and also to increase the reach that you have. Okay, so I'm now going to hand over to Kat. Um, so my name is Kat and I work for Altmetric. Altmetric are a data science company that track discussions of research online and the type of data that we collect is called Altmetrics and this is what we've partnered with Kudos to provide you with right in your Kudos profile and in doing this we're hoping to make it easier for you to track the effects of your outreach efforts for your research um, and it's really easy because as Lou has just shown you can find it all in one place. So I wanted to start with a definition. What are Altmetrics? Um, in a nutshell, altmetrics are all about attention. They're a type of data that can help us understand how much people are talking about research and what they're saying about it. They're a great complement to traditional citations, so what you would normally find between journals, and that's because they can tell you of influence beyond the academy. So if we think about who talks about research, traditionally it was scholars at conferences, in journals, um, within their departments, but now there's a much broader audience interacting with research online and the question has become how can we find out who's talking about our research and what they're saying? And Altmetrics provide that solution. So with the new technology we can now see where research is being discussed by practitioners, by special interest groups, so perhaps patient groups, um, and even by public policy makers or corporations who might be interested in using your data or your books or your articles in something that they're developing. Moving on to look at some of the numbers. So as I mentioned, Altmetric is just one Altmetrics provider. And this is just some of the attention that we've seen in our database. There's an awful lot of discussion happening online. Um, so we've tracked attention to nearly 5 million pieces of research to date. Um, and every day we're picking up thousands of new mentions. So it's pretty obvious here that a lot of activity is taking place and you might even be one of the people driving this activity if you're out there actively promoting your research to a more general audience. To give you a bit more of an idea of some of the types of altmetrics data that you might see, this will differ between altmetrics providers but these are just the examples of what we altmetric provide. Um, some of these are unique to us, so for example where your work is cited in a public policy document is something that if you click on your altmetric data in Kudos you'll be able to see. And we also track thousands of news outlets, social media sites um, and other sources such as Wikipedia and YouTube to look for mentions of your research and whether that research is a book, a data set, a journal article, we'll match it up and assign that attention to your item. Just a little bit more detail about how that works. So as I mentioned, we follow a big list of attention sources, so news sites, blogs, social media like Twitter and Facebook. We look for links on those sources to domains that we recognize. So for example, nature.com. Um, we'll follow that link and see where it takes us. And if we end up on a page that has a unique identifier for the item that is being discussed, so perhaps a journal article, we'll match that up and then we collate all of the attention together and present it in what we call the Altmetric Details page. And you can see this in the bottom left. It's a record, a real-time record of all of the attention that your work has received, and you can click through each different source to see all of the to understand what people are actually saying. And the really nice thing about our Kudos integration is that if you're sharing, for example, your Kudos page on Twitter, 
will also amalgamate the attention that that has received with the attention of your original paper. Quite often when you come across altmetric data, you'll see it represented in this donut visualization. Um, I just wanted to explain a little bit about that so that everyone is clear on what the score means. Um, the donut, the colors of the donut represent the sources of attention. So if you've been mentioned in the news, you'll see red in your donut. If you've been tweeted about, you'll see light blue, for example. And that will change depending on where you've received attention from. And then in the middle, you can see the altmetric attention score. This attention score is a weighted count of the volume, sources, and authors who have mentioned your research online. It's not a measure of quality, it's just an indicator of the amount of attention you've received. For example, with the authors, if a journal has been automatically tweeting out all of its new paper, that will contribute less to the score than perhaps an influential academic who shares papers from lots of different journals. So it's calculated using these three main factors, and it's important to remember that this really isn't a measure of quality. Some articles get attention for negative reasons. For example, they might have made a mistake, it might be particularly controversial, it might just have a funny title and people are enjoying sharing it online. And that is why it's always important to remember that metrics only tell a small part of the story. So you really need to click through to that details page so you can understand who is actually saying what about your research and why it's being discussed. Lastly, I just wanted to move on to some use cases to help you understand how you might actually use this data in practice. Our first one features Dr. Melissa Terrace. Uh, Melissa is quite a big fan of simple self-promotion. She does a great job. She links to her research from her blog. She started doing this, but after a while she wanted to know, is blogging about my research really having any tangible effect? So to find this out, she took a look at the old metrics for her research and in particular the downloads and how often it was being discussed online. And she soon found that the 10 minutes or so she spent a week blogging had a massive impact on not only the downloads for her paper, but also how often it was cited later on. So that's a really good measure of putting a little bit of effort in um, to see big rewards from it. And you can do the same thing through your Qdos profile as Lou kind of briefly showed before this. As an active user of Qdos, you have access to all of this altmetrics data so you can quickly tell if your self-promotion activities are having an effect. So let's just take a quick look at a short example here. So these are the Qdos for an article. Uh, and if we click into the graph, as Lou showed earlier, you can see where the author or indeed Qdos have done some activity and how that correlates with the rise in the attention for the item. And if we dig further by clicking on, for example, see more details or on the donut itself, you can access all of the original mentions for that work. So again, you can explore not just the numbers of how much it's being talked about, but what people are actually saying and why they're commenting on it. Some examples of why you might be interested to use this beyond just knowing if your promotion activities are effective is, for example, if you're looking for evidence to use in tenure and promotion applications. So in this example here, we have Dr. Trevor Branch, uh, Trevor works at a university that has a public engagement requirement for people going up for tenure and he does a lot of online outreach and has looked at the altmetrics for his paper and used them to showcase the positive effects of those efforts. So you can see he's not only featured the altmetric score of his paper but he's also given it some additional context by saying how it compares to other research published in the same journal um, and actually where that attention has come from. So in this case, it's come from some widespread media coverage, um, which kind of shows that it's, it's not just him and his friends tweeting about its work. It really has had a broader reach. Another great use case is if you're applying for grant funding. Um, increasingly, funders are asking to, for you to demonstrate how your work will have a broader impact um, or how it will drive engagement and awareness amongst a broader audience. Um, so here we have Dr. Maestra. He's used metrics in a fairly similar way to our previous person, um, but in a grant application. And he has chosen to highlight recommendations of his work by experts on faculty of a thousand, as well as the overall volume of readership that his work has received. And there's a really important point in there. I think it's really up to you to determine which metrics are relevant to what you're trying to demonstrate. So for some people, seeing it's been tweeted a hundred times and it's been shared a lot won't really mean much. 
but knowing that and being able to demonstrate that it's been referenced in public policy might be really important to what you're trying to show and might really help you build your case for promotion or in your grant applications. So we'd really encourage you to log into your QDOS profile, take a look at your metrics data, see what is already happening around your work because people may well be discussing it even if you're not out there sharing it yet. Um, get familiar with the data, start to understand what it means, see how other people in your field are promoting their work, and then start to try to experiment just with some small steps to see what effect that might have on the attention you get for your research. And we think you'll find some really positive results. Thanks, Lou. That's me done for now. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kat. That's fantastic. And uh, I'm now going to hand over the control to Jeff. Thompson. And uh, Jeff, you now have control. Thank you very much. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes? Yes, perfect. I, I hope so. Okay. Uh, so my name is Jeff Clovis, and I am working in the IPNS, uh, Intellectual Property and Science Division of Thomson Reuters. Um, I am the head of uh, Global Solutions Specialists and Customer Education for the Government and Academic Markets big title, and essentially I work uh, with partners such as Kudos and, and work with our customers on solutions for them. And today I want to talk a little bit about our partnership with Kudos and what it means. Um, uh, and the internet is slow. Okay, let me use this. Okay, so so it was good to see that 70% of the users or the se session attendees are familiar with the Web of Science. The Web of Science is a research solution for, for discovery that is used in over 7,500 international research institutes and universities in 120 countries. It is among the top used uh, abstracting and indexing services, and it is uh, celebrating its 20th anniversary this year, so we're very proud of that, and, but it is among a, a group of resources or portfolio of, of resources that are very important, including our own EndNote, uh, which is a bibliographic software management software package that is integrated into our own solution, but into other solutions as well. And then also we have Insights, which is a research uh, performance uh, tool, uh, platform that allows one to benchmark one's institution and to analyze performance to answer very critical questions uh, among, among those, you know, your organization, your department, your, your researchers, and how they compare and what your investments are doing as far as the impact on the, on the outcome, on publication out, outcome in particular. So we're dealing with the international peer-reviewed uh, scholarly literature and the metrics associated with that. And then uh, in the bottom right, we have something called Converis, which allows you to manage and re report on all scholarly activities at the university. It is a CRIS system or a research management system. So, uh, the Web of Science today is, as I said, it's a unique collection of metadata about the system. Uh, we cover, we do cover to cover indexing. It's a site, it produces a citation and network to re reveal connections between scholarly works because we do cover to cover comprehensive indexing, but also we allow you to communicate with authors. So it connects people together as well as papers together. And due to the comprehensive coverage and entity unification, you can use the Web of Science to generate analytics, including different types of indicators, benchmarks, and, and even predictive models. And you see some of those uh, in front of you on the screen. The bottom left is something in the called a citation map, which would allow you as a researcher uh, to look at topical-based uh, uh, citation maps, or you could do your own works to see who's citing you and what you've cited previously from a paper. Um, but the Web of Science is really unique in that it, it, it includes journal curation, depth and breadth of coverage. The metadata is unlike any other metadata where we do comprehensive citation indexing, all the authors, all the author addresses, producing the citation network as well as the ability to produce analytics across many, many different disciplines, 200 
disciplines, in fact, uh, 170 in the sciences, and then uh, 82 in the uh, social sciences and arts and humanities. And today, uh, the Web of Science core collection includes uh, over 62 million records. It's the largest citation database, uh, over 1 billion cited references back to 1898. It's inherently multidisciplinary, meaning that we endeavor to cover all disciplines of the sciences. We're independent and neutral as far as what we select, and we do cover-to-cover -cover indexing of all 17,500 journals, 12,000 annual conferences, and, and at this point, 10,000 uh, volumes of, of books per year. It's, that number is up to 75,000 at this point. We do cover-to-cover -cover indexing, and the metadata is unique in that we also include every cited reference, 100% of the authors, author affiliations, and funding agencies since 2008, including the agency information as well as the grant number and the text of the grant. So it's a very trusted resource, as I said, in 7,500 institutions the world over. And at the core of it, you have the sciences, social sciences, and arts and humanities, conference proceedings, books. We have a chemistry resource. And we recently uh, uh, expanded the scope of what we cover to, to, to a cross-disciplinary resource called the Emergent Sources Citation Index, which is part of our platform. Platform. And you see that we also have a number of different tools on the platform that are all linked together, the applied life sciences, the patent literature, um, the, the data repositories that we're indexing in the data citation index, animal sciences and zoological record, and all of these are connected together and designed to work as one. But at the core of this, we've connected the citation networks to these. So it allows you then to, to, to harness the power to find untapped possibilities to move from discipline to discipline, and then very importantly, to communicate with authors because we have all of the author information in all of these works as well. And we're, we're moving forward in time as well as uh, uh, backward in time in that we're, as we move forward, we're, we're filling in data as we're, we're doing full cited reference at this point. And then when something is cited, we're also filling that in retrospectively. So that, that, that is, that is unique. And also we, we, we were among uh, the founding members of ORCID, uh, and actually Researcher ID was the precursor of ORCID. ORCID now has taken, uh, you know, at the helm and very importantly reflects the awareness that creating and managing unique identifiers is a critical part of a researcher's career. That's very, very important. And we are uh, adding ORCID. Um, we, we received a monthly ORCID file from from them as a founding member, and we're updating the Web of Science. So uh, it's becoming more and more uh, curated as we move forward and as ORCID is adopted. And very neat, very, very importantly, we're looking at uh, partners. So we, we know that we researchers and, and university professors and faculty need to have their works discoverable and well understood, and they want to provide others with the, the ability to scan what they're doing. And so what we've done is with, or, with, with Kudos is we have a web service that Kudos has integrated. Nothing has to be done by the individual member user of Kudos. It's automatic where the web service is taking the DOI or unique identifier and going into the Web of Science. Once it links to that paper, it's pulling in the time cited count and allowing you to see the time cited count at the paper level in all of the kudos data. And that, that number then is reflected, uh, also kept in sync with the loads in the Web of Science so that as, as we go forward in time, your papers then reflect the international peer reviewed use of your, uh, of the research that you've done and is reflected in your kudos dashboard. Also that there is a direct link into the uh, uh, citing papers for each of the kudos uh, works that has a time cited count from the web of science so that you can immediately then see who has taken your research forward and where those authors are coming from as well as what institutions and what journals those, those, those papers are published in. So it gives you a quick way of seeing 
the, the impact of your research and then communicating with those who have taken your research forward. And I believe that's it. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeff. And please do remember on the right hand side, you can actually add any questions or comments that you have. We will be addressing any uh, questions at the end of the session. Okay, so we've talked about how to distinguish yourself. We've talked about um, being discoverable. We've also um, talked about evidencing and increasing impact. And um, now we're going to talk about further increasing that impact. So I just want to show you here some real life um, authors who use QDOS. So we have Eric here. And I think what's interesting to show you in these different um, cases that I'm going to show you is that um, they've used a number of different ways. And it's really what works best for you. And it also depends on how wide your network is. Because you may have a small network. And so you might not have lots of click-throughs. However, when you get your co-authors involved, when you reach out to your um, institution or your funder or your publisher and ask them to recognize your efforts as well, you're only going to further increase um, the dissemination of your work. So we can see here that Eric, um, when him and his co-authors had done some work on the QDOS publications page, they saw over 800 views. I think it's up to about 933 page views now. Um, they had click-throughs through to the full text. And they also had a number of clicks on sharing. And they used a, a whole mix of different social media and online media for so sending out through email. We can also see we've got Michelle here. Um, Michelle had mainly used Twitter. And even though Michelle has uh, profiles on a number of sites, she knows that QDOS is unique in what it does. We don't want to reinvent the wheel when someone's already doing it really well. And we want to make sure that you've got choice. And that's why partnerships with other services out there, like those that we've already had talking today, are so important. But Michelle saw um, lots of views on her publication page just by using Twitter. And again, uh, clicks on her shares and then further through to the full text. We've got Nick here. Nick's a fantastic user. I speak to Nick quite a bit. He's part of our end user advisory board. And anybody that wants to join our end user advisory board, it's very open. Nick has a fantastic picture on our platform where he sat there with a, um, a uh, cuddly toy, a big tiger that I'm guessing he won at a fair or something. But he's a really great character and a fantastic professor, but he loves using QDOS um, for um, increasing the impact of his work. And he's also seen really great results from that, mainly by using Twitter. And what I will say here is we recently did a study with um, Nanyang Technical University. And from that, um, we determined that even though people are using all these different channels, LinkedIn has actually proved to be the most popular in terms of the number of click-throughs that have been happening. So you may find um, that you use Twitter more because it's a bit more of an open channel. But actually, how is that working for you? And you can look in your dashboard and you can look at your numbers, find out what's working best for you and save um, time. Be more efficient with your time because we know time is very important. Um, Joanne here, she signed up to QOS hoping to um, get further reach outside her network. And she's certainly done that by receiving um, here we've got 234 click-throughs from Twitter itself. So um, just by sharing with her community and her network already, she's already been really impressed by the way that QDOS has helped her. And it's about a really easy system that helps you explain and share your work simply. And then you're also being able to track and measure that and, of course, evidence that further. Um, Philip Gale. Now, Philip was... Um, one of our early adopters, and he was part of our original pilot in 2013. And he has seen um, great things happen with QDOS with his work. And he loves the fact that he can link um, a lay summary to his paper as well. And then Naomi, of course, um, someone who I've spoken to quite a bit. And uh, she's fantastic. And she's really seen um, a lot happening with a mixture of different social media. So find what works best for you. If you need us to help you, no problem. Just get in touch with us, and we will happily do that. We have um, a really good blog series called Improve Your Results. If you go to our blog, blog.growqdos.com, and I will send this information out in the follow-up email, um, you'll find some really nice examples in there about how to increase 
your work. Okay, so um, just in terms of how to increase your impact further, and we've only got a few more slides and a couple of more polls, and then we'll go into the questions area. So uh, we will be finished very soon. Um, but in terms of how you can increase your impact further, work with your co-authors. Make sure that they're adding content into your QDOS publication page. Connect outside your network. So this is where you can work with um, the institution, the publisher, the funder, for example, to help to recognize the efforts that you're already doing. And also your co-authors can introduce you to a wider network by sharing the work that you've already done. Make sure that you come back. Um, a lot of our users will come into QDOS and they'll maybe add a simplified title and possibly a perspective and then they share it. And then they come back and they add resources and then they come back again and they might add some additional information. They treat it very much as a one-stop shop. It links out to the full text. You can add a link to the institution repository. It's a great place for you to help to build your academic reputation or even your own reputation. You can explain um, more publications if you want to. And what I will say, it doesn't matter how old your publication is. If it's still really relevant, then there's a way that you can increase the impact of that. Breathe new life into an older publication that's still really relevant now and watch to see what effect you have on your stats. By using the QDOS toolkit to monitor and of course increase those counts. And I mentioned before about being time efficient, just work out what works best for you. And also, um, if you have someone maybe in a research department who supports you, or if you have um, someone in the library to support you, they can work with QDOS to give you hints and tips and guidance on what's working best for others in your subject discipline as well. So do reach out to them, and we can help them with that. And as we've mentioned a few times, make sure you're reaching out to your institution or funder or publisher, because they love helping and supporting you and recognizing your efforts. And we've talked about lots of different support available. There's um, a handout on here from Altmetrics with some hints and tips. We've got um, a really fantastic blog series. And we'll be sending out um, a follow-up email with some really good information for you. And just tell us what you want. Is there more information that you're looking to have? You know, the more that we hear from you, the more that we can talk to these people, the better the demand is. So before we come to the end of our session, I'm just going to very quickly cover what next steps you need to do. So if you're not already done so, go to growqdos.com and register for a QDOS account. Make sure that you link your ORCID account. Check what metrics you've already got for your publication. Do you already have citation counts? Do you already have an altmetric score? Explain and share one publication. Try out the toolkit and see how effective that is at working for you. Reach out to your publisher, your institution, your funder, your co-authors as well. Review the altmetric and web of science time cited counts once you've done that activity to see how much of a positive effect you're having. And then either come and explain and share another publication, maybe a different subject area, maybe to a different audience, or indeed come back and explain and add more content and share again a publication that you're working on. I would like to say thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. What I mentioned before about the hashtag mobilize research, do make sure you get on Twitter and you're using that hashtag mobilize research um, tag. Um, tell us about how you enjoyed the session. You've also got here um, the social media for the different partners, and we will be including that as well in the follow-up email. So let's have a look at the questions that we have. OK. So um, if you, no one else has any more questions or queries, um, we would like to thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. It has been an absolute pleasure. And I'm sorry we ran a couple of minutes over. Always the case when we've got such interesting questions coming from um, our attendees. So we will be sending out a follow-up email with a link. Um, if you need us, we're always here for you. And we very much with you soon. So thank you very much, everybody.